visionaries welcome back for another merch by amazon video thank you for joining me back for day two research this time deeper dive into merch informer yesterday i showed you the merch informer merch research extension and so i wanted to take you behind the scenes to the paid version of research and kind of show you some of the tools there to help you delve down into niches and just find niches in general that you might be interested in so thank you for coming back and if you're not subscribed please do subscribe to the channel for more and let's get started continuing on from yesterday i showed you the ds quick view so that you can see what the bsrs for specific shirts are and kind of fine tune in on what particular sub niches you want to get into through that tool and so since then i've noticed that some people in the Facebook groups have been having problems with the DS quick view and I've experienced that as well uh, that extension is causing as it cycles through and refreshes itself I guess is causing some issue with Amazon thinking that we're bots on the back end I guess because the code or whatever kind of protocols is going through in the background Amazon is not liking that now so I since have uninstalled the DS quick view again that was a tool to see the BSRs for for specific shirts so since then I've gone ahead and installed helium 10 instead and so you can see that icon here so um i would recommend you utilizing that but it has a x-ray tool that's going to show you some product research and then the asin grabber as well uh, how these interfaces are they kind of remind me of unicorn smasher so if you're familiar with that um, and then just on screen, if we go um, and look at Amazon quickly, which I will at the near the end of this, actually, I'll just go kind of going here in the merch research tool and do a quick look at food, food t-shirts today, or let's do food hoodies today and kind of look really quickly. Um, and so you'll see the information populate here and show us kind of what the um, BSR is for these and the approximate time. Uh, how many times does it show? How many times it sold? No, it's just showing the BSR. So you'll be able to uh, see the BSR here. And again, these are filtered by featured in general but you can have fun and play with newest arrivals those newest hoodies that's out there that's selling you peek at the bsr for those and or customer review i started playing with customer review as well because we know that these shirts have sold at least once if not multiple times and super popular uh shirts will have more reviews than others depending on how many times that it's sold so sometimes i play with that so that's what i go over in the first video but anyway i digress so if you need something that's going to show you a tool that's going to show you bsr here i recommend using helium 10 for that and that's what's going to give you these numbers here so you can see the popularity and which ones have sold and not sold like this one hasn't sold so it doesn't have a bsr this one has sold recently and has a bsr of 775 so as you know the less lesser the number bsr the lower the number the better so usually i look for shirts that have 500k bsr or less um, a million BSR or less means that it has sold, but not sure if it sells on a regular basis. So you have to kind of do more research into that. So I'm going to show you some of the tools in Merch Informer that is going to show you kind of the history of some of those um, shirts and how often they sell and then at what pricing. So you'll have a deeper view into what shirts are actually popular and which ones aren't. So Again, that's Merch Researcher review of what we talked about yesterday, utilizing Merch Research and the DS Quick Viewer. Again, DS is not working very well or is having some glitches going on, so I'm using Helium 10 as of this video. So back to Merch Informer for those that are or are not familiar. Um, it has various resources within Merch Informer. I use Merch Informer primarily for the designer tool that's in here so 
uh, more that versus the research tools, but I'm going to take you guys through the research tools today again to kind of show you what else is in there. If you've been entertaining, whether you would want to have a paid subscription to Merchant Former and then the tools that you would get access to by doing so. Um, I, I forgot what monthly fee I pay. I don't know if it's $9.99, $19.99, whatever it is. But if you're interested in more information, I encourage you to utilize the link below this video. Um, it is an affiliate link. So if you do happen to subscribe to the service, I do get a little um, compensation from that, a little royalty from that. And I thank you in advance if that's what you want to do. But again, there's free tools out there that do some of this stuff. I just find that Merchant Former is more powerful in some ways than others. And again, the design tool saves me a boatload of time. And so that's why I use this designer versus the method that I used before. And I'm going to get into designing and in some of the other videos that I do later this week with design tools I use now versus how I started and um, what has been the easiest, quickest for me. And I'm going to go through free tools as well as paid tools. So stay tuned for that later this week. So in either case, um, Merchant Former, let's get right into the login and access the tool. So again, I was talking about the merch designer and I utilize that often. I do use the Merch Informer Lister that makes it easier to post your listings on merch or on Amazon Merch. Um, and you can set up some profiles and things of that nature. And then we have the designer, which I love. There are some Merch Academy videos as well. And then when you get into the interface, there are some, you know, videos to show you talk about different aspects of these tools. Um, so again, that's with, with the paid version of this. It might be a more simplified version of these videos, but either case, you could look at more Merch Informer on YouTube. I'm sure, I think they have a channel anyway, so you will have access to some of the videos on there. But anyway, let's get into the search tool. So in the dashboard, you'll see um, various different tools here along the side so when I do come in here I go first into Merch Hunter and you really so if you're you already know a niche that you want to go into you would just type the keyword here so I look at search by best sellers in the top 1000 is going to return the top 1000 in the keyword search that you're looking for. And I usually do not do the by default, the one through 100 K. Those are shirts that's like selling like gangbusters and they probably are in niches that are oversaturated or sayings that are oversaturated. So I really just do the hundred thousand and above so you'll see why um it's probably le less saturation there so i'm just gonna do food let's say food and just food t-shirt and then go ahead and search so it's gonna take a little bit to cycle through and then you'll come back with some shirts and so the results data here um, you're looking obviously the thousand results and the lowest is a 1307. So there are some shirts that are just starting out and getting out there, but the average BSR is pretty good at 288. So it's on the lower end of the, the spectrum. And we have some that are priced at $24. So the average pricing is $17.53. And that's important when you want to look at where you can set your pricing as your, your t-shirt gets up and sold like What's the threshold of how much you can sell it for compared to other shirts in the niche? So that's always, you know, important to look at. And then here are some keywords that individuals use. So here you go. You're one, looking into a niche, what keywords are being used most often. And you take some of these words and develop sentences out of it for your bullets, titles, descriptions, etc. And it's depending obviously on what type of food you want to feature on your design. So if it's a taco shirt, it makes sense to use taco Mexican, Cinco de Mayo, tacos, fiesta, whatever makes sense for that particular shirt. But let's take a look below at the actual results and see what 
shirts here are selling more often than others. So the first one that you see here has, is estimated that it sells about 24 times a month. Pretty popular. It's a vegan shirt is utilizing friends so again i would not encourage you to do that some people are getting away with doing plays on popular shows movies things of that nature but i would stay away from that for copyright and trademark reasons at some point because even though the shirt is selling well it's ill-advised that you would use this stuff it looks like a merch shirt based on the icon but i would forget not do that kind of stuff Again, they're using a friend's reference here, not in the title, but Joey is one of the characters in Friends, so I wouldn't def necessarily use that, even though it's selling 21 times a month. People are pushing the envelope with this stuff, and I wouldn't do it. So anyway, you can just kind of see, take a look at the shirts. It's giving you the ASIN, the BSR, how many estimated monthly sales, what's the average BSR too, so generally the bsr is at 125 but t today but the average over 30 days it is pretty good because it looks like it on average is has a bsr like 345 which is excellent so even though we went into the food niche not quite sure why this bunny shirt came up under that niche but obviously it's around easter time so this shirt probably jumped up in popularity here and one nifty thing about merch informer is that you could take a look at the history of these shirts and um how you know what it what it's selling how it's selling so over the past couple of months it's fluctuated up and down up and down um till it got lower here and generally um the pricing for it has remained the same the whole time to 16.95 and they're selling a bunch of them so i guess they saw that their sweet spot was at the 16.95 and kept it there but again this is the easter shirt and so over this time the trends pretty well for it but it's probably going to fall off at some point because it's really branded as an easter gift shirt instead of just I love bunnies type of shirt in general. So you can see kind of, you know, that, you know, this is more in depth than you just going on Amazon and seeing a shirt at that snippet in time that you looked it up might have a BSR of 300K because it just sold, but then may not sell for five months. It could have been them just putting up their shirt or somebody happening up on the shirt and buy it once but that doesn't mean that it's going to keep up at that level um beyond the moment in time that you search for it so this gives you a more historical view of how these shirts are faring so that you kind of kind of know you know when you venture to do your design what's popular what's not where what area of the sub niche you might want to go into and so on so we're still and food, let me look for another food related shirt because it's like all, all animals we know. Taco Tuesday, so this is a birthday play for Cinco de Mayo and tacos. So, you really, if you're gonna, going to go into an oversaturated niche like tacos, you have to come up with something unique and do something like how they did here taco tuesday they made a play on t the day tuesday i made it the number tuesday and it's like birthday along so toddler birthday along with cinco de mayo along with tacos all in one and so this month they may have sold up to you know 15 of these in over the last 30 days it's gotten better um bsr and that's probably because we're closer to cinco de mayo in general but as this shirt stays out there past cinco de mayo and it's a commemorative shirt of turning age two and loving tacos it may not sell as often as it would around cinco de mayo so just certain things to keep 
in mind but yeah if you were at a loss for what kind of food shirt or what kind of sport shirt or what kind of music shirt or whatever genre you're interested in if you were interested in focusing on specific types of sports or hobby like bungee uh jumping or i don't know cave diving or whatever you want to look up this is a good place to start and kind of see what other shirts are out there and where you might want to play. So in the food niche, a lot of people are focused on Cinco de Mayo because we're coming up near that or Easter related shirts, Easter foods and stuff like that. So that's the pizza shirts are always popular. So here we have Bigfoot and pizza, the Sasquatch and pizza thing. I have some shirts with Sasquatch on it, but again, you got to kind of have to mix those things up if you want to get any sort of views, first of all, on your shirts and then beyond that, get sales. It has to be unique, well-designed, and kind of a mashup of a couple different oversaturated niches as a means to niche down and make your shirt unique just like the unicorn thing people have mixed unicorn with four or five different ideas in the shirt to make that unique and then make that its own sub niche so you have to get really creative so uh it's all in how you want to spend your time do you want to spend it trying to remix certain niches that are already super popular oversaturating a fight for some real estate on the first page or look for some niches that aren't so saturated that do have a good amount of views you know on a regular basis and get sales that way so that's just up to you a personal choice on which one you think will be more beneficial to you and help you make sales quicker and you being able to develop quality designs for so that's generally if you already kind of have an idea of an overall niche you want to get into and you want to kind of look at what competition is out there and help you get more ideas of how to niche down that's merch hunter now if you don't have any idea of what overall niche you want to get into um, and looking for some inspiration. They also have Trend Hunter. So under Trend Hunter, you have the Movers and Shakers. And so for Movers and Shakers, let's go in there. And you can check the trends by daily, weekly, and monthly. And I usually go into monthly because daily and weekly can kind of be misleading um just based on whatever was popular that day or that week and it again is kind of skewed especially when you're coming up to holidays and stuff so it might be a lot of Cinco de Mayo shirts Easter shirts um Mother's Day will be coming around pretty soon so that sort of thing so I usually do monthly and again most of my portfolio is evergreen so obviously I'm looking at monthly type of sales for um you know monthly for more evergreen designs versus trending design so that's up to you so let's just start with monthly and see what's going on there so again if you have no idea what niche or sub niche you want to get into and just looking at things then you can go ahead and take a look at these shirts so there are some patriotic shirts flag shirts gamer shirts of course um these things always come up these leveling up shirts and birthday shirts are always popular um certain years and birthdays they always come up at the top but i again will caution you certain years are trademarked so you definitely want to look in tests and make sure that if you're going to put a year on a shirt that the trademark isn't already established for that we really want to be careful with that kind of stuff uh dog shirts shirts about you know states where you live sayings uh, lgbtq shirts so it's just generally trending shirts, looking at the BSRs for those, where are they priced, how long have they been out, when did they start selling. 
you want to look for shirts that has the you know lower up and down type of thing and stay below certain things this one is starting to sell but it sold once and now then it got to 1800 kbsr and then it's going back down so it's doing a little bit but you really want to look for ones that's like selling and then a little bit and then get as low as possible with the steady you know pricing and optimally, you want the pricing to be higher than this. So just, you know, take a look at what's going through here. These are kind of just sold once or twice in the month, which isn't a big, over the past couple of months, which isn't a big deal. Um, you really want to look for ones that kind of, sorry, I'm scrolling through these fast, but I want to kind of find another one that is um, selling more regularly like this. You want to look at ones that kind of have that up and down going, like they look active and then they stay low, have a low BSR because they continue to sell. So like this one, Vegas, which you got to be careful about that, the Vegas sign and all that kind of stuff. So it takes a little bit of time using the Merch Hunter tool, looking at niches that you want to get into and doing further research and to the pricing, things of that nature. And then from here, once I get an idea, then I go on to Merch by Amazon itself and then look at how much competition there is. Let's say you want to do this Skull uh, Viking, Scandinavian Viking shirt. And you look online and see and on tests and see that it's not trademarked. Then you go on Amazon and see that it's only two shirts in the niche or whatever. Less than 500 shirts in the niche. And you want to try to go get into that and design it and put it up. You, you can sell it, you know, at a decent price. Because this one is selling at $19.99 and it's sold, you know, four or five times over the last... 30 days or whatever so um you know just looking at that looking at certain trends and utilizing this tool to look into that so it's um various other tools in here like product search so we could do the same here and look at food again um and search and see what what comes up most of the time you could just put food but I find myself putting a t-shirt after it just to see you know what keywords and just narrow it down a little bit more than just doing the general and it takes a little bit of time so again this is the product search so these are three different tools in here but again this is again to help you sub niche down and look at different keywords and things sub niches that's going to help you get what you are looking for so again food here I'm not sure why food came up maybe the word sucker here but <clears throat> you can you know look in and this and then it also shows you reviews it looks kind of fluky here but it also shows you which one have re has reviews so you can see which ones are really popular they got have a very low BSR so this is another way for you to search up the shirts as well and kind of see what's popular obviously again Cinco de Mayo shirts and all that some um, dirty humor is always good <laughs> to get some um, sales like this one right and um, in this one that sort of thing so you just have to one there's our bunny shirt again so just go, you know, if you don't have any idea what you want to search, then you would go to the trend hunter in here again and kind of look at what's trending. If you do have an idea of an overall niche, then you would go into the product search or merch hunter. So these two tools. And um, just take a look at what's going on, what's trending, what's not, what niche that you might want to get into and not. And then, again, you would look at up those things, figure out, make a short list of what you might want to do, and then go to Amazon, search the niche, see how many shirts are up there. Ideally, I look for less than 500 shirts in that niche. And for those shirts, like the first 
five to ten shirts having a, a good BSR less than one million. And then I go from there and design the shirt if it's okay with trademark and it looks like some good competition going on in the niche but it's not oversaturated then I jump in with the design of my own but I make it unique more unique more clever more funny more graphics oriented or whatever it is than the other shirt to not copy what the person is doing but kind of going off of that funny vibe or clever vibe or whatever drew your attention to the shirt in the first place and then remixing it and doing something totally unique that you're not seeing on the first and second page and then also delving into those keywords fine-tuning those keywords and your description title and brand to bring it up to the first page and then if you start seeing it getting sales then doing the AMS ads as well so I hope that this is helpful to you. Again, this is a paid tool, but that merch research tool that I showed you guys in the first video yesterday, that's totally free and you can kind of search up the same thing except you would be doing it direct on Amazon and kind of looking for the best sellers in a particular niche. And one more time with this merch research, you don't have to type anything in there. In the last video, I typed in music, but you don't have to do that. You could just go in there and search for the sweatshirts or whatever, right? And then just obviously, again, it comes up with featured. So you could go to featured and see what the BSRs for the top, the first page are and look at some popular ones that you might not have done before. So Terrier Mom Love or whatever, and it has a 977 BSR. This one is Prince Dagonia, whatever that means. So you just have to do research from there and look at the newest arrivals. Yeah, it's just up to you how you want to start the research, but then further double check it and test. And then, you know, look at how much competition is in there in general. So that's what I had to share today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go through one more kind of a technique that I use to search up things. The one that I showed you on Monday and Tuesday were the ones that I started out doing. I don't use Merch Research or uh, Merch Informer to do research very often because I kind of have my process down and I know what niches I'm like flooding out and interested in doing stuff for and it kind of comes organically to me to what as to what my next designs or shirts are going to be. So I want to give you additional insight into that on tomorrow's video. And then Thursday, I might do a video on Friday as well, but definitely Thursday I'm going to show you what tools I use to design. Now, again, I mentioned that I use Merch Informer to design shirts. And so that's the main tool that I'm going to be on, but I'm also going to show you additional tools and how I used to design shirts in Canva. And when you design shirts in Canva, there's an extra step that you you have to do in general uh, to size it properly for Merch by Amazon. So I'm gonna show you that process. And then I'm gonna show you some free tools that are similar to Photoshop if you are uh, f familiar with Photoshop, I've used it before, are comfortable with it, but just don't have a license to Photoshop, then I'm going to show you an online design tool that's similar to that with similar functionality where you can design or fine tune the images on your shirts as well. So I hope this video was helpful to you today. Welcome your feedback down below, any comments that you might have on research or the series in general, I welcome that. And please do like this video if you like the content, you like the series that I've been doing for the last couple of weeks and um, just like the content on this, on my channel in general, I appreciate you for watching. If you are not subscribed, I do videos weekly, um, reverting back to my Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 
schedule after the second week of daily uploads and daily merch videos. So do please continue to tune in. And again, until next time, be well and peace, family.